Hello and good morning to everyone. I see that uh, many have joined us in our webinar today, uh, the Daria public consultation for the SSH Open Marketplace. Hello uh, to everyone uh, from our side. My name is Stefan and uh, yeah, let's just go to the next slide because then we can uh, continue with the introduction. You have uh, Frank with us. Uh, most of you will know him as a Daria director and he's also a work package lead for the marketplace uh, work package together with our colleague Laura who will do a lot of uh, hosting and Mentimeter in between today. So you will hear a lot from her. Then we have uh, Clara and Nicola from CNRS Humanum. They will talk about curation and governance aspects of the marketplace today. And last but not least, Klaus, uh, our nice colleague from Vienna, and he's taking care of uh, yeah, the uh, content side of things. And uh, he is answer, uh, able to answer every technical question you may have in between. So that was uh, the speaker's array. And now I quickly hand over to my colleague, Laura, who will give you a short introduction on, on the plan we have for today. Yes, hello, thank you for joining everyone. So before letting the main uh, speakers speak, I would just like to, to share a few remarks with you. So the goal of this meeting today is really to, to connect with the diversity of DIA expertise you represent, um, because three days ago, we officially released the alpha version of the, of the SSH Open Marketplace, and we will explain all the details in, in a minute. And we really hope to, to open an active discussion uh, about it today with you. Um, and I will also share, to, before we, we officially start, the few technicalities about the, the, the online meetings, this online meeting. So it's an, uh, a meeting that is recorded. And so you agreed to do this um, while registering. If you want to speak during the discussion session, you have to raise your hand first. So there is a, a button on the, on the bottom of your uh, Zoom um, window and you, you will then be allowed by the moderators to, to speak. You can use the chat to post your questions at, at any time during the meeting and we will try to answer it uh, either live uh, um, writing or during the, the discussion uh, sessions. Um, you can switch on your camera if you want uh, um, while speaking. It's not an obligation, so just uh, feel free to use the camera as you want. And all the documentation, also the slides, will be, will be sent to you after the, after the meeting. So this is our agenda for today. Um, after a few questions for you, Frank will present the, the context of the creation of the SSH Open Marketplace. Uh, then Stefan will guide you through the alpha version of the SSH Open Marketplace. We will have then time for a few questions. Um, after this, Klaus will enter into details about the content of the marketplace and the technical aspects. Uh, Clara and Nicola will introduce you the governance and curation schema we are working on. And after this, we would like to take time to discuss with you the challenges we are facing while creating the SSH Open Marketplace, and it's supposed to be the most active part of the, of the discussion. And so to start, I would like to ask you, yes, to go to Mentimeter. So it's, um, I will send you also the link in, in the chat. It's menti.com. And uh, Stefan, if you stop sharing your screen, then Martina will be able to, to share hers. So you have the, I um, should have written the whole link. So you just have to go to menti.com and there you need a code, I think. So if you go on menti.com and you have this uh, code on the, on the top of the screen here, 260668. Exactly, it's also written in the chat. Thank you, Klaus. And we have a few questions for you to start this. Uh... So this is the first question. <laughs> what is your country of <laughs> residence? <laughs> Uh, 
Croatia, Netherlands, Italy, Australia, Austria, Australia, Germany, Slovenia, UK. So not the usual suspects. We have a really, really broad uh, range of backgrounds here today. That's good. Czech Republic, Ireland. Nice. So thank you for this uh, first uh, Belgium as well. Great. I think we can move to the next question. So within shock, we have um, these categories that was developed for the stakeholders, and uh, we would like you to uh, fill uh, one answer. Which of the sh of these uh, shock stakeholders categories do you in identify with? So we have researchers, university, and academic institutions, you know, research libraries and archives, research infrastructures or e infrastructures. So more research libraries, archives, and research infrastructures. University, academic institution as well. Thank you for this answer. So majority of uh, research infrastructures, libraries, universities, also a, a nice proportion of researchers. And OK. So the next question is, um, if you can describe your research domain or area of data management expertise. With a, some free keywords, social sciences, digital humanities. That's not surprising at all, yeah. <laughs> ah. More is coming, bibliographical data. Philosophy, heritage, science, knowledge management, anthropology. Yeah, this will be an issue later because the marketplace is not only about the humanities, so the social sciences have to be presented a lot, a bit more, I think. <laughs> and we will also organize other sessions, so that's something uh, we could have also mentioned in the introduction. So today we are organizing this uh, public consultation with the DIA community, and we also plan to organize uh, other sessions during the next months targeting other uh, other communities. We will explain all of this uh, during the during the work. <laughs> So thank you for this answer. It's, it's a really nice uh, diversity that is represented today. Thanks to all of you. And this is a question you saw already at the beginning. So have you already been involved in DIA activities, working groups, projects, national DIA nodes activities, or something else? And if yes, maybe you can also precise if which working group you are affiliated with or what kind of activities. Now we have some former colleague from the Desir and Humanities at Scale project. The RDM working group, research data management working group. Chair of the bibliographical data working group. And that's not only a, a nice uh, question to look at here, but also um, yeah, the call to you to have a look at the DARIA website and maybe you find interesting offerings, working groups uh, around there. So, yes. Community engagement working group. It's also interesting to see how we could uh, better connect with some of the DARIA working groups for the next, um, mm -hmm. for the next months. Uh, thank you for th these answers. And I think we have one last question. And it is, have you heard about the shop project and the SSH open marketplace before? So for those of you who answer yes, we will try to go into details, but then for those of you who answer no, we will try to be as clear as possible to make this presentation a nice introduction to it. A majority of yes. Yeah, because we invited you. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, but we try, as you will later hear, um, yeah, to be as transparent as possible about the marketplace development. So the question is serious because you also have uh, projects where you work in the hidden room for two years and then um, the service uh, gets presented. And with shock, it's at least for the marketplace the, the other way around. But thank you very much for your answers. And uh, we will go back to Mentimeter at the end of the, of the session. And um, now I would like to give the floor to Frank for the presentation of the context of the, of the marketplace. Frank? Yes, I'm here. Can you see and hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, and, and we see your slide. See you as well. Okay, thanks for that. So I'm here to try to answer the big why, uh, why the SSH Open Marketplace. So they have always been attempts at collecting the tools and services used in our communities. There were cross-national attempts like uh, Teresa. I'm not sure who of you remembers it, but it was an abbreviation for Tools E-Registry for E-Social Science, Arts and Humanities. And the fact alone that you, know, you have these e Dash abbreviations uh, should uh, show you that this is from a very different time, so it's an old attempt. There were other um, attempts like national registries, uh, international ones like TAPOR, the Text Analysis Portal for Research, or the DIRT directory, the Directory of Research Tools. And building on all these experiences, but also acknowledging that most of them did not last due to uh, sustainability reasons, we thoroughly studied the reasons for this and we'll give it another try. This time it's very different, 2020. Um, first, because Daria as a research infrastructure has a far better understanding of its identity now. So we know much better what to say yes and what to say no to, depending on where we can make a difference and where we can actually uh, fulfill our, our role for the community. And second, uh, the new research landscape calls for an uh, integrative approach. So it's not done by only registering tools and services, but also we are confronted with data, with tutorials, research papers, workflows, and all this. So this really calls for a contextualized uh, approach about contextualized knowledge. So these are the changed uh, uh, circumstances in which we, we are and which the marketplace tries to address. Now, according to our published strategic plan for the next seven years, which you can find online as well, um, Daria uh, is a creator or tries to act as a creator. And uh, as such, we want to build a marketplace to facilitate a fluid exchange of tools, services, data, and knowledge. So this is part of our daily work to build this thing and to make it work for the community by uh, liaising with it, by communicating with it, just like now, just like today. Uh, and all this happens within the uh, shock project. Uh, and uh, this all happens to connect our SSH communities to the European Open Science Cloud, uh, the EOSC, because uh, we have our own practices and epistemologies and we need uh, them properly addressed uh, to contribute to the European uh, data landscape. Uh, if, if uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, there you have, uh, quick overview uh, over the, the whole shock project. As you can see, uh, we deal with an impressive number of 45 partners. Uh, the project budget is also quite impressive. Uh, only a fraction of it, of course, we use to build the marketplace. Um, we are in at, at the middle of more or less of 40 months. So by releasing a very early version of the marketplace, we're also trying to still be available for a lot of uh, critical feedback from the community, even like almost two years before the project runs out. So we don't deliver something at the end and tell you, you know, do what you want with it, but we really try to make this a community project, which is also why today happens. Um, our objectives are many things. Maybe you can go one slide back, please. Uh, so we are creating really the social sciences and humanities part in this project. So the marketplace is one uh, a part of this uh, endeavor, but of course it's, uh, it's many work packages and we all try to integrate our diverse communities uh, into the EOSC so that the European Science Cloud also works for our communities. Um, we are also of course addressing and trying to maximize the reuse of data and other things by uh, adhering to the fair principles. This is also something that really has to be installed in the center of our community so that we don't even think about it anymore, but that it's just part of our daily work. 
And we also, as Daria, we are enabled to do that, try to establish an appropriate governance model because if we build this, this is one thing, but uh, how to sustain it is another question. And maybe now it's time for the, for the next slide. Uh, thanks. So like I said, um, well, Daria uh, organizes or uh, also uh, does uh, with our partners is uh, to establish a governance and sustainability uh, schema. Uh, we are also responsible for, uh, for putting the sources into the marketplace that will help us to better understand how our community works and how we can get uh, help in our research. Uh, you see some of the sources listed there. Uh, Tapro, I already mentioned, this is the longest standing uh, tools directory. It's still there. It has 1,500 tools in it. And I don't know who of you works a lot with uh, tools like third party tools, but uh, I'm guessing that uh, not many of you are aware that there are like 1,500 tools uh, developed from or within or for our communities. And Tapor has all this richness in there. Uh, the SSK is the Standardization Survivor Kit. This is something also developed uh, with Daria in the Partenos project. Uh, this tries to understand that it's not done by just uh, downloading a one-click tool and your research is done, but that research is, of course, a workflow. So the Standardization Survivor Kit tries to detail these workflows. And if you've never heard of it, it's maybe try it's maybe worth to, to visit the, the website. Then there is an attempt uh, at collecting uh, this knowledge about workflows, which is called Programming Historian. Uh, I think it's one of the most successful ones in our community. And although it is called Historian, I think it addresses the whole community, like the digital humanities. Uh, so they have around 60 or 70 uh, tutorials. And uh, it's really good because uh, they really have an engaged community behind them. And we also try to highlight their stuff in our context, contextualized views of, uh, of our community um, by putting this also in the marketplace. Uh, In-kind contributions from within Daria are also a thing that we want to highlight because sometimes if you develop something for your own national node, uh, with just a little bit of effort, uh, it's also usable and useful for the broader community and we want to facilitate that as well. Then there is a project called Daria Campus where we assemble a lot of teaching material and tools. And we also want to highlight that, all of this together with the community. And this is the crucial part now that um, starting now, we have a lot of activity around community engagement uh, and the, we want to establish the curation process so that it's really uh, built on many shoulders. And uh, uh, something uh, I want to make sure of is that we are building the marketplace on existing communities so we don't have to uh, invent new communities. So we have the Daria working groups, uh, we have special interest groups in the community. We have also Daria bodies like our national nodes who will play a pivotal role in there. So these are all things that are um, uh, important for us while we build this. And with this, I give the floor to the next speaker. Thank you. Many thanks, Frank, for this comprehensive introduction into the overarching context. I see that in the chat, uh, many of you are asking specific questions. I think it's good to do it in this way because you get the answers uh, instantly. After uh, I will uh, introduce you now to the marketplace, we will have some kind of discussion round where you can also use the microphones to ask. This is just for your information. So now a bit more details about the service itself. Um, it is aimed at the social sciences and humanities and at several points uh, you will note that uh, yeah, currently it's a humanities marketplace possibly. So we are aware of this and uh, we don't forget the social sciences but currently it is like it is and it's a good start. We know the community that's why we come out with you today with Daria. So this is uh, just an explanation when you look at the contents of the marketplace so far for whom it's uh, of interest. So um, yeah, researchers, of course, but beyond researchers, also for the providers of the resources and the services, and in the long run, possibly also other target groups uh, just as funders possibly. But currently the marketplace is focusing on researchers looking for information and on resource providers who want to expose their resources. What will be the content of the marketplace? Basically, it's quite open. So there are a lot of um, resource types um, possible. 
the data model is from a technical point of view very inclusive. Klaus will give you some more details on the data model later. But of course, and not surprisingly, the majority of the content Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, so I will try to take over uh, as we, okay. Um, so the SSH Open Marketplace, um, I'm, he, he was uh, speaking about the content. So what we have identified at the moment are tool services. Uh, okay, and I will also share my screen, sorry for this technical problems. Here it is. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so the content we have identified uh, so far are tools, services, data sets, tutorials, uh, workflows, and this is all the content that we aim at showcasing in the marketplace. We developed two lines of curation, uh, one uh, with automatic uh, harvesting and aggregation of metadata coming from uh, external sources, and another one um, to refine and enrich the content that we automatically collect by community-driven uh, curation. Um, and as it was mentioned also uh, by Frank, uh, we are developing this in the shop project, which is uh, the uh, SSH branch of the of the EOSC. So we are working to develop this in close collaboration with other research infrastructures uh, such as CESDA, Clarin, uh, ESS, Share, but also Iris, Liber, and a lot of other partners. Shock is a project we use so this in in uh, Frank's slides with uh, with a, around uh, 50, 40, 45 or fifty partners. So we try to, to build the, the, um, the marketplace based on a, on a participatory design approach and a user-centered uh, design approach. So to involve community uh, since the beginning, because that's also, um, we believe that it's um, involving community since the beginning that we will be able to build also the community that will contribute to the curation of the content in, in the marketplace. Um, so we released last year the system specification of the of the marketplace, um, and we we based all the process of the user requirements on on interviews and uh, user stories to be sure that uh, the the technical aspects and the data model and the system architecture was actually the reflect of a user's needs. Um, we are also uh, constantly trying to keep these links with the with the community, so that's why um, a public consultation platform is also on the making on the shock project, and uh, we organize a series of webinars and workshops to to keep this contact, and uh, we can actually do this also relying on the expertise and the networks. Of the of the the other research infrastructure, so in the DIA context, Elisa Papaki, that you may know as the DIA communication officer, is a really um, precious person in in this context, and in the, we are also relying on the other communications officer of the other research infrastructures. So the alpha release, uh, what we are talking about when we are talking about the alpha release of the of the marketplace, um, this first release. And the, the alpha version of the marketplace is uh, not made to be public. So we decided to release the, 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 this first version for testers and also uh, for public, like a closed session like this, uh, this workshop. So you have the link here. Um, we, will, uh, we will have a workthrough in, in, in a minute. Please don't share it at the moment, or at least not uh, on Twitter. That was more or less what we discussed internally. We didn't want to put a login and password on it, but the idea is that we don't want to go fully public with it because we are not fully satisfied with the uh, with the curation process because we really need to, to work uh, more on the enrichment of the data we, we have ingested at the moment. 
and also because the public release is planned in December this year, so in six months. So we still have six months to, to, to work more on, on, the, on the enrichment of the content we have already uh, aggregated. And we will have a final release in um, one year after, in December 2021. And, uh, okay, sorry, because it was Stefan. <laughs> uh, um, so the, the, I think on the next slides, yes. So that's what the SSH open marketplace uh, looks like at the moment. Um, so these are uh, screenshots of the, of the mockups or maybe even of the, of this, uh, of the alpha version. So you can see the search bar on the, on the, on the top of the page. Uh, we also are developing browsing options on, on, the, on the second part of the website uh, to allow more discovery and serendipity uh, while browsing in the, in the different collection of content. You have direct access to the content also by category on the top and these categories are still also under discussion because uh, depending on the, on the next content we will um, uh, we will integrate. Uh, we can also might change a bit, not not a lot, but probably, but uh, slightly change these categories. This is the result list uh, of of your search. So we uh, adopted a quite um, classical approach here. So with the filters on on the on the left part, where you can refine your search and an overview of your search uh, results um, on on the main uh, on the main part of this uh, results page. This is a detailed item page. So you can see on the right here, the tool details. So that, uh, that are all the metadata uh, collected on an item. As we want to make it clear that uh, we are not hosting the content, we are just pointing to, an, to external resources. The go to button is also kind of prominent here. Um, you can see the description of the, of the content uh, on the top and uh, we are working on um, integrating uh, nice illustrations, images, or screenshots to also make the, the presentation of the content more appealing. And I think the next slide, yes. So this is probably um, the most interesting things uh, and also the most difficult part, uh, the related items. So for uh, each item uh, presented in the marketplace, what we want to do is to connect this item with, uh, with other resources. For example, if you have a tool, we would like to, to connect quite easily uh, through this uh, related item, uh, a training material that could help you to, to uh, use the tool for the first time, for example, or also um, a research papers uh, that describe the use of a tool in a given uh, research context or for a given research project. So this is something that we are still refining. And in this uh, alpha version, the, the relations are still a bit artificial, uh, but this is the part we are working on uh, now. Okay, Laura, can you hear me and everyone yes, else? Yes, you're back. I'm, I'm so sorry <laughs> that uh, I it's dropped fine. off uh, technical problems. And believe me, it didn't happen in the last month. So today is the first time. Um, Many, many thanks to Laura for taking over this spontaneous. And as you have seen, we all work on the marketplace on an everyday basis. So it was no problem for her introducing uh, to you. If you give me the screen back, Laura, I will add a few remarks, if I'm allowed. To I, I don't know what uh, Laura explained uh, to you in detail, but uh, I have some notes I wanted to show you directly here. So if you go to this uh, starting landing page of the marketplace. It's reduced uh, for a reason. So we uh, see this as a tryout page. The user just should uh, enter the search bar and then get into the service. So no tutorials are presented here intentionally. And um, of course, we are aware that most users won't access the marketplace directly by entering the URL and in the browser, but they will come from different uh, places in the internet. We are aware of this. So the keyword here is uh, search engine optimization, but also, and maybe more important to be present at the research communities communication channels. That's also a reason why we talk uh, to you today, because the marketplace has to be uh, visible at certain communication channels, the users know. 
and if you go here to the uh, result list, it's basically the same. It's quite uh, kept easily. So you just have to click on the items to learn more. What is highlighted are the categories that we find interesting. And, all, and here you have them on the top, uh, of course. This is quite conventional presented. Hmm. It happened again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think we can now open the, the question session we planned after this, uh, this work through. So um, if you would like to ask first question, so keep in mind that after this, we plan a, a detailed um, presentation uh, by Klaus and Clara and Nicola about the curation, the content and the governance aspects. But if, if you would like now, we have some time for um, for questions, so you can raise your hand in the in the um, on the Zoom application, and uh, we can open the the discussion now based on this work through. Yes, Sally, I think you can unmute. Yes, yes. perfect. Oh, I can't put my camera on though, it's not possible. Hi everybody, um, thank you very much for this too. I've heard a lot about the SSH from Open Marketplace before, but it's great to see it in all its context and detail. So thanks very much for organizing this session. Um, you're probably gonna cover this in the next um, date, well Klaus is probably gonna cover this in the next session, but um, I'm very interested in relations. Um, and I just wonder if, is, is there a linked data um, data model un underneath this to create those relations or I wondered if you could say a bit more about how those relations will be created. Frank or Klaus maybe? Yeah maybe I can jump in so, so it's a good question thanks. <laughs> so, so it would be a great idea to do this and it may be that in the future we will will work in this linked data perspective. But currently this is not the case. So, so, so it's still in this alpha release. You see the related uh, um, section here, but it's a kind of trick currently, honestly, but we are working on it. You can imagine that, that looking for algorithms and we also need a lot of, of, of tools. We need a lot of data there. And currently you see the alpha release. There only is a, a small amount of, of, of items there. We also have a development instance where we already uh, have, uh, have around 1,000 uh, items. So there we try to, to get more clever algorithms for doing these relations. But we are working strongly on this and, and thanks also for your input. And we are also looking forward to do this in a linked data perspective. So I hope it answers your question. Uh, yeah. Can I maybe add to this? Yeah, uh, so uh, since we have a strong API behind this and the data model is all working in this respect, it will not be a problem to expose what we have as linked open data to make it, for example, available through a Sparkle endpoint. Uh, so this is all part of, this, uh, of the thinking process. And uh, like Klaus said, I think we are very well uh, situated to, to provide that in the future. That's definitely something we will want to have. Thank you very much. And I just wondered if I could maybe briefly respond. I think this is great and great that you've got APIs and linked data ideas behind this. I just wondered, could there be a user um, input kind of um, connection with the um, relations as well? Um, have you thought about something like that sort of um, uh, not user generated content, but um, try and involving the user in that process? Can give a brief answer. So, so there are ideas on this. So, so, so we have different uh, 
ideas that we discuss. So one could be that the users are allowed to create collections so that they do a, a kind of pers own perspective on, on the data and then share this relation. So that would be a, an idea that is discussed and you can then follow uh, one of these users as an example. And the relations will be then built up on, 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 on this basic, on, on the users you choose to follow as an example. But that's uh, something that we are discussing and every input for good ideas is very welcome. Perfect, thank you. And maybe I can also add to this, uh, sorry, um, the, the curation process is something we are installing right now, which is why it's so important to have this conversation with you now to see what you are uh, willing to contribute and to see how we can integrate you in the process to really make the marketplace yours. But this is really a question of curation. And as you can imagine, in, in such a rich environment, it's hard to do that, but we will do that because it all will hinge on the curation because we want to keep it up to date. And you know, that's why uh, yeah, it's so interesting for us to hear what you're willing to contribute. Thanks. And in addition from my side, curation is not only crucial, but that's only also a real challenge for us how to get uh, you involved in the process because clearly nobody will uh, give his time for free uh, to improve uh, a certain service. So there is some kind of relation necessary and that's where we get, uh, yeah, we are looking for your ideas and for your feedback, what could be possible and what would be right incentives to uh, have user generated content. Are there any other questions? I can see also in the chat that uh, Tom Accumulé, you were uh, speaking about social tagging with a question mark. Do you want to elaborate on this or me, me, later yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just uh, to follow up on what Sally uh, said, so maybe uh, I want to ask whether you considered some kind of uh, social tagging mechanism, because what I understand that you will allow for some kind of collection uh, system within the shop, but uh, can some part of the, the metadata uh, be enriched by users through like social tagging systems that may be then used to sort of uh, help with the, uh, the, the algorithm and the data curation. Many thanks, Tomasz. Yeah, and uh, one important remark here is there possibly comes the user management question into play. So some of these things you can maybe do technically quite easily, but uh, then with user-generated content, at some point you have to think about accounts or something like this. So we see uh, this discussion. Um, primarily, we want to keep the marketplace as open as possible and the hurdles to add to our content as low as possible. But maybe this will uh, be then some kind for, for user accounts in the future. Currently, that is not entirely clear. I hope this answer answers your question a bit. And then I see Lars, uh, thank you, asking, why is it a marketplace and not a catalog? Yeah, because a catalog possibly would just be yeah, some kind of information hub where you harvest from third party sources and then you have the list, that's okay. And this would also be useful. And the marketplace, it is, yeah, because of the curation we discussed so far, we want uh, to enhance and refine our um, database um, and to give context and relations to the items. That's where the marketplace comes into play. But clearly, it is not a marketplace because you can buy or sell things there. So this question comes usually, it's understandable, but uh, the marketplace is open. If I'm, can, can I actually also talk or? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, otherwise please. I just type, <laughs> okay. So hello everybody. Hi, um, and thank, uh, Thanks again for, um, for this workshop and also for presenting the tool. I think it, uh, it could become very, very useful. Um, I see it still also as a kind of potential in terms of a marketplace, also what, uh, what Sally put out there um, in terms of uh, getting, getting academic credit or something like that in a way because the, for some of the tools or when we, when we provide tools, when we provide services, um, we don't necessarily need money uh, for that. So in terms of, okay, here, click here and we get two euro or something like that. Um, but what would be helpful and I think what will be more and more necessary in the future is that we can demonstrate the use by the community. So um, even something simple like saying, okay, here we make sure our tool is there, it's well documented and so on and so forth. 
um, if we can get something like an uh, like an excerpt at the end of the year saying, okay, here this information has been requested uh, three hundred thousand times by members of the community or something like that. Um, so any kind of further details about okay that people use it or how people use it um, could be something very very helpful for us, and that would be also very motivating, for example, then to say, okay, now we put it on the, uh, on the marketplace. Um, because then we can get back some kind of usage information about that. You're perfectly so, right. A reputation is a, is a good currency in this regard. And then you have to look for methods or instruments how to facilitate this. And uh, if I look at the chat, Franziska is uh, also uh, suggesting social interactions as part of this. Yes, I would agree. But there you get then the huge challenge of keeping uh, the editorial overview of things. Because if it's all content related, maybe that's fine. If you get into a broader dimensions of social interactions where you want to create a community, I'm, I'm not sure about this because this involves a lot of work, but it sounds nice, of course. Maybe we can um, keep some questions. Also, I can see the Sally's question about the PIDs and and, and DOIs for the workflows. I would suggest to to move to Klaus and Nicolas and Clara presentation. Like this, you will have a, a better um, view of the data model and and the the different things we we plan to to connect and to implement and uh, to come back to to the questions and to these questions after. So Klaus, I will maybe move the yes hi everyone it's great to, to, to be here and uh, we'll give you some insights into what we call the sources so we already heard something about this and and i give you a little bit more background information how we do this how we ingest these sources and i will also show you some workflows that are already part of the curation and this this will lay the, the floor for the talk later on about the curation aspect that's so important for us. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the next slide. Yes, uh, you already heard that about the sources that we already interested, but you can imagine that there are way more to come. Uh, I think it's also imp important to highlight once again that we mainly collect metadata. And it should be relevant for the social sciences and humanities communities. That's something that's important. and sure we do have a preference for already created data, data because it makes us easier to do the, the job and what we already also have, have mentioned here but i also like to highlight once again once again are the type of items that we interest into the marketplace so these are tools and tools can be software and services we also have something that we call digital objects and that can be information like publications or it's a training material and it can be also sometimes data sets. But there is not uh, a focus on data sets, so it's more, it's still something in discussion, but we more think about uh, having only exemplary data sets that accompany a publication. And the other, the third, the, maybe the most complex one, is the workflows. And workflows can be composed of steps. So that's something that already in the chat was discussed, so that could be very interesting. And the standardization survival kit is something where there is this idea of workflows, or workflows already there, and you can imagine to use it uh, on some other places there. Okay, maybe in the next uh, slide. So um, the next slide, I show you briefly the data model because it's it will be one of, of uh, will be an important uh, outcome of the shock marketplace. Um, and you see there, it's 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 it's. It mimics partly uh, linked linked da uh, data ideas, and we, so, so one thing to highlight here is that we call our main con content the MP entity, the marketplace entity, and uh, the other types are derived from there. So we share basic fields. Every type shares basic fields, and then uh, the derivations of this base entity type then. Uh, uh, gives more information on the specific type. So a tool does, does have different other information than a publication. And to get more flexibility, we use properties. And properties are something that you can add to, to your entities. And that's, I guess, that, that's the part that, 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 that shows the, the pathway to, to link data, because we are really free here to add these properties. And as I highlighted it here, it gives the flexibility. But on the other hand, uh, we need to do a kind of harmonizing. 
And the, the idea behind this is that we try to ideally back up every of this uh, property or as many properties as possible with vocabularies. And one of the vocabularies I mentioned here, the DIRA, but there are also self-developed uh, vocabularies and we use different kind of vocabularies. So that will be something important so that we not only have a taxonomy, but we also have a kind of, of, of strict uh, vocabulary approach here. So maybe the next slide. Um, here I show you a little bit of the technical background. We already heard that, the, that there is an API. So that's the most important point, the connection point here. So we do have a backend that's developed in Java. There is uh, an Apache Solar Search Index and, and the database and vocabulary is there. And we do have then this REST API. That's the connection point to, to all other stuff of tools that you put there. So that's a decoupled approach here. And the front end you already saw is, is made in JavaScript and it already uses the REST API. And in the front end there will be also the curation. We do have the ingestion tools that also use uh, takes the, the REST API. And you can imagine a lot of other tools and, and, and it's free, so, so it's documented, the, the API. Uh, and so that, will be, that will be the interesting stuff when then others develop interesting tools, maybe for, for looking how their tool uh, uh, is used in the marketplace or whatever. Okay, maybe we can jump to the next slide. So that's uh, only some, some discussions point that we can uh, take, uh, so that we can pick it up later on. But we'd like to have feedback on a data model. Um, we also like to have recommendations on, on, on the interested sources that we can take. So we already have the ideas that, that uh, about sources in the future to ingest or where we already work on. So Taria Campus is something, Taria Teach, Open Air, USC Marketplace, Switchboard, DH conferences, Teresa, or these awesome lists that are around and you can imagine a lot of other stuff. Um, I will also later on show a little, little bit about the, the, ingest proce the ingest process, so because it's also important to know how this works. Um, what is important, I guess, is that, we, the, that, that the technical setup that, we, that I showed you in the last slide is well thought out and it's already tested. So, so we have a good, so the alpha release shows that we have really a good technical base. And then we can build up uh, on, on, this, on this technical setup with this all the interesting stuff like curation and, and other stuff. Yes, okay, maybe next slide. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's how I like to show you some of these workflows that I already mentioned. One is the mapping workflow and the, that's the first slide. So how we do the mapping. So, so that's one of the crucial uh, first steps if we get a new source. And I guess it's a kind of, of workflow that's well established, but I also like to highlight it once, um, once more. So how we do this. First of all, we start with analyzing the source. That's different ways how we can do this. And from there, we have a kind of, of impression or we write down the source of uh, the data model of the source. We then look for overlaps that are uh, given in our data model. And we create them, there are so kind of paths, of mapping paths. And we also have then an overview on, on which kind of data we need to ignore. So, so usually such a effort comes with, with only uh, some parts of the data. So, so the source is the more rich part, also the, you get more information at the source. And we can give you the hint where to go there. So we do this identification of overlaps in different ways. So currently it's manually. So usually you need to have a, a human eye going over there and, and have a look on it. Yeah. So what we also need to do there is, is that we need to define rules for data processing because uh, the, the data model can differ very much at the source from the, from the one that we have on our marketplace. So that's also something important for us. And the next step, and then it's also the, ne the next slide, is that we hand over this to the ingestion workflow. And there we have some tools there already. So, so one of our partners is the semantic web company. They use the put party semantic suite. That's one of the tools that we use for ingestion. And we also have a kind of uh, started to have some custom scripts there. So that may evolve in, in a more elaborated uh, toolkit, let's say. And so th 
we tried this out, it works quite well. So with the API and with this mapping process, we can then take the data and the data can be in different uh, types. So it can be also in an API that is used at the source. It can be a database dump. It can be a CSV file. So we used also a spreadsheet where we exported the CSV and then take it and ingested it. Uh, and yeah, so, so based on these on this mapping paths and rules that we defined in, in the mapping process, we then uh, adapt this in the ingestion tool uh, or define these rules in the ingestion tool. Then the next step would be that we have vocabularies, that we have connections to authority files that we use, that we need to identify at first, but then we, we use, we connect it to, uh, to them. So currently we do have the DIRA integrated, we have NEMO integrated, and further vocabularies will also come. Then, I already mentioned it uh, beforehand, so we do have a development instance, so we can do this drying out all of this stuff in a development instance. And at the development instance, we also have these thousand uh, tools already from Tapper and so on. Uh, but we decided as the curation is very important here and, and the data quality is important that we start the alpha release, the production instance with, with uh, some dedicated tools. So not with the full list because we're working on this. Okay, but what is important here, ingestion creates a first version, curation then takes over. So that's the basic idea that we have here. Uh, maybe we can show the last slide, I guess, from my side. Uh, one back, please. Uh, yeah. So that's also uh, also some discussion points or some observations here. The challenges here. Uh, you can imagine if, and and I guess some of you or a lot of you are already in this you know the backgrounds about doing this mapping and so on. We share the same issues. So <laughs> that's something we we also need to, to to handle out and and every input here is welcome. So we do have bad, bad data quality. We need to reconciliate the data. We need to, to look for, for duplicates, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's the very usual tough tasks that you need to do when, when dealing with mapping and ingesting. Uh, but this mapping ingestion is really important because it's the entry point for preparing this fairness of data. And that's also something important that we like to, to show at the shock marketplace. Yeah. So I think this mapping ingestion, as I mentioned here in the last point, is a kind of evolving process and we define some guidelines there. So that's also an important thing that we document and create these guidelines and these guidelines then feed the curation process. So there, are, there is a connection between these, 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 these three parts and I take this as chance to hand over to, to the next uh, speaker. So, Lara Nicola, it will tell you about the curation ideas that we have. Thanks. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm going to present now with uh, Nicola the governance uh, and curation aspect of the SSH Open Marketplace. So when uh, analyzing and discussing the governance of the marketplace, uh, there is an underlying question, which is how to find the best governance possible to, of course, sustain the SSH open marketplace after the end of the shock project uh, and a governance scheme that allows to ensure uh, the three added value of the SSH open marketplace, which, is, which are a quality contextualization, quality curation, therefore, and a community driven approach. So I have five minutes to present you uh, what we've come up so far. Uh, so regarding the governance, we have two form of approach. The first is uh, macro governance, let's say the big picture for the SSH open marketplace. Uh, you should know that so far um, a governance hypothesis has been agreed upon. So after the project ends, the marketplace will be handled by several ERICs, uh, including Doria, uh, at least one year of the, after the project ends. And three governing bodies have been uh, agreed upon. Um, so the governing board, of course, which will be um, committed to th support the sustainability of the marketplace 
uh, and will act as a decision-making body, the editorial board, which will be committed to the curation through the editorial policy, and to foster the community-driven approach. We're also investigating a, for a sort of community forum. So for us, this would represent a way to ensure the visibility of uh, SSH research communities challenges uh, and uh, practices. Uh, so we're investigating whether it could organize, for instance, into thematic groups that will then link to the editorial board and or to the governing board to provide feedbacks. So the community driven added value uh, is proposed through this community forum, but also through another form, which is through the curation process. So uh, could you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So when discussing the implication of the community within the curation process, we approach what we like to call so far the micro-governance, which is related to the curation aspect. So for the micro-governance and the user's involvement, uh, we're thinking about the curator. So the curator would be a user um, which, who would be able uh, to contribute to the creation process, uh, for instance, by being able to suggest new content in the discovery platform, uh, but also to enrich what is already proposed and offered to the users. The second uh, creation role uh, also that we need to uh, consider is the one that is within the editorial board what we call moderator or what uh, Nicola will just after me uh, introduce also as maybe chief editor. So that will be a dedicated member of the SSH Open Marketplace editorial board, uh, which objectives and mission are based uh, on the editorial policy. Uh, when uh, approaching this uh, curation aspect, this community involvement or the role of the moderator, there is the question of the curation criteria, uh, whether for a curator or a moderator, actually. Uh, so several are being uh, investigated at the moment. Uh, for instance, the SSH scope of an item which is uh, offered, uh, the extent to which, uh, let's say, a tool or a services uh, suggested is up to date. Is, uh, is also uh, an other uh, idea or the fairness, the, the extent to which um, the curation criteria should help uh, the curator or the moderator to contribute following fair principles. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to leave the floor to uh, Nicola, uh, who is going to discuss uh, how to ensure this quality curation process aside from the curator's involvement. Thank you. Thank you, Clara. So my name is Nicolas Larousse. Some, some of you already know me. Uh, so this is, this is not, uh, as, as Clara said, uh, we are just at the beginning of uh, this uh, introduction of governance, which is micro. I like the name micro and, and uh, micro and micro governance. Uh, it's, uh, I think this is the right way to see it. So we, based on the experience we had in uh, humanities at scale, uh, trying to do uh, an editorial board for open methods. I don't know if you know this uh, meta blog about uh, methods used in, uh, in humanities. So we think that maybe we need to have a moderator or more likely someone who takes decision, so it could be a chief editor. It's, uh, it's not a problem about, about how to call, it, to call him. So, you know, you need to, at a certain point, make the final decision on publication and or, which is more important, the publication, because when something is obsolete, you need to, to, to take it into account. You, you want to check, the consistency on the content. Uh, and you know, if again, with the same experience and open method, you need to gather people 
on the editorial board with very different expertise. So this is something which is really important to, to be aware of that. And also, <clears throat> we need to define and very, we need to verify that there is a sort of compliance, uh, compliance with the editorial policy. And also, you need to, of course, make the connection with the governing board, the macro, well, so-called macro governance. And uh, for instance, to define editorial policies to adjust things. Uh, next slide, please, please Stefan. So, no, I'm speaking for my parish, as we can say in French. Huh? So we think that the curation is one of the big assets of the marketplace. I saw the message of Sally uh, with the uh, curation is so important. And of course, uh, if we look in the past, the, for instance, uh, the project Bamboo, uh, we need to have a strong curation and we need to establish that uh, on the long run. So I put some curation feature, but it was already mentioned, you know. And uh, uh, Frank, I think, mentioned a link with other resources like Wikidata. I think it's really important to rely on existing resources. And for us, and in my opinion, uh, curation and governance, of course, play a great role in the sustainability of the marketplace because it's, uh, it's um, the main thing to have fresh information and properly curated information. Next slide, please. So we try to have a sort of schema <clears throat> and uh, you have all these bodies that we envision for the, for the creation of the marketplace. And you see that we, as, as Frank said at the beginning, we are, we are relying on existing communities, working group from Daria, and, uh, for instance, and so on. And we want people to, uh, to, to be very active in the development and the maintenance of the marketplace. And um, last, uh, yesterday with Clara, we joke about uh, some things that we call the crowd curationing or something like that. And this is something we need to, to try to put in place to ensure the sustainability of the marketplace. I think I'm finished about that uh, part of the curation, which is, as you remark, uh, is a little bit different than the curation that Klaus introduced. It's um, another level. For instance, we, when we have done this spreadsheet party organized by law about curation, we were, say, were mentioning what, what is the best description of a tool, for instance. Do you take the Wikidata description or do we take uh, the description from the editor? So this is this kind of questions that uh, lead to an editorial policy that we need to put in place for the marketplace. I'm finished. So many thanks to Clara and Nicola for their talk. You may save your questions now for a moment because uh, with a look at the schedule, we now had our presentations for you. And now we would like to enter yeah, the discussion round. And uh, we have the idea for this to make a name your challenge session. So on the next slide, uh, you see how it's intended to be. It's a consultation. So we ask uh, for your feedback. Uh, we really want an open and honest discussion. So if you uh, see uh, risk factors or, or lacks or deficits on our side, please name them. We appreciate this. And uh, yeah, I would now suggest that we take two minutes of thinking. So I think you have some questions prepared already that occurred during the talks. But uh, after the two minutes, we can then enter the broad discussion uh, as an audience here. You may uh, use your microphone for this. So just uh, indicate by raising the hand or even open the mic, we will get along. Or you can use the chat, of course. And if we have a look at the next slide, you can uh, get an imagination of uh, where the discussion could like. These are ideas from our side. Um, with look at the current question from you so far, I, maybe they are not necessary. So I think we, we have a lot to discuss, but uh, here you have some inspiration, what could be uh, requested. 
Oh, cool. Okay, so we hope for a vivid discussion. Um, take a moment uh, to think about and then uh, we open up uh, the discussion. Why, if you have uh, already questions uh, right now, maybe we can start instantly because I look at the um, watch and we have until uh, half past uh, 11, so not much left uh, time uh, is over for the discussion. So maybe we should use the time. Maybe Tomac, uh, Emily, you want to, because you, you just wrote um, a comment that is very important and interesting, I think. Maybe you want to elaborate a bit on this to, to start uh, the discussion? Mm, yeah, so uh, what we've seen as the work of working group is that many of uh, contemporary researchers, especially around Daria working groups, right, are researchers, but they are also involved in curation processes in different ways. And they clearly see the connection between, right, the curation process and then the research outputs. So I can see sort of a uh, incentive for research community to involve in curation processes when uh, they can see that the results of those curation processes can uh, uh, can be like the, the opportunities to perform research on content aggregated in shock, right? So you can see the groups working like that with shock. Sorry for my son, he is having fun. I don't have to sorry, it's okay. And um, yeah, so that, that would be the, the, the sort of a thought about the blurred lines between curation and research in contemporary, you know, research landscape. So maybe this is just a thought, maybe suggestion, I don't know. Another remark in this regard is that the, the shock marketplace doesn't stand for itself. It's integrated in the EOSC universe. So a lot of uh, visibility will come from this side which uh, could add positively on this reputation aspect you mentioned. Other yeah, questions or remarks? We can just to, to add that, um, so today we, we focus on, on DIA communities and DIA assets as we mentioned at the beginning, but one of the aspects that is really important um, for, the, for the SSH open marketplace is that the aggregation of content that we aim at doing are really connected and embedded in, in existing other communities that are already structured. And then as um, Klaus also mentioned, like the, the content we are aggregating, we tried to, to rely on pre-existing curation as well. So it's, it's an important part of the, the process, um, I think. I don't know if Klaus or Frank, maybe you want to add something on this topic? Oh. I can completely agree. <laughs> so, but I guess that's a really important thing to input and something that we need to look further into. We had also question and and uh, comments uh, by uh, Francisca Dir in the in the chat. Maybe do you want to to open the mic to to share one of the questions or some of the questions you. You are during the, the, the talks? Yeah, I think it uh, was discussed already. And now, like, okay, I also think like curation is really uh, crucial in this whole thing. And yeah, I was like wondering, okay, um, what is a curator? So, of course, individual researchers will be users of the SSH open marketplace, but um, will they also be curators? Will they make the effort? So, that was I, why I was wondering, okay, um, how could like curators be motivated um, or what will their motivation be to, to make the effort? And yeah, maybe this is more about not like individual researchers or um, users, but more like, okay, working groups which are already um, involved in, in doing such things and uh, could make, yeah, have another motivation maybe to make the effort or have other, uh, yeah, means to, to do that. So yeah, I think we are already discussed it. So thank you. <laughs> Emily is asking in the chat, uh, what a strange design of the user interface does mean. This is just a request to all of you. Um, how do you like 
the user interface of the marketplace so far? Do you think, uh, yeah, that's what I expect uh, from a marketplace or from a place where I can search for resources? Or um, do you miss important functionalities or even find it uh, not convenient how we uh, you uh, order the, the content? So this is a question to all of you. Yeah, visualizations. That's uh, you mean uh, visualizations, um, for instance, for for a result list, right? Yes. So yes. We, we are thinking about this. So I think I mentioned uh, the knowledge graph. We are looking at the open air example, for instance. Um, other visualizations are of course possible, but if you have specific preferences here, yeah, Sally, please let us know. Yeah, so I was just thinking about a, because I don't know, maybe it's me, but I'm a very visual person and if it moves, so I like this, I, d I haven't seen the open air knowledge graph, but that sounds an interesting way to kind of, I think obviously the search and browse and the filters are extremely important, but if it could be intuitive and to be able to Serendipis serendipitously, I can't say that, navigate through things mm. visually with nodes in my head. I've got this kind of nodes and you click on a, a node. So if you had different sizes, so for example, if you've got the grouping of things, say you're interested in digital text analysis and then you can see around that there are bigger nodes and you click on them and zoom in. But I realize this is... Um, this is probably a dream. Yeah, I think it's a very, very important remark, Sally, uh, because we, we would like to have a serendipity in searching the marketplace. And how do you get serendipity? Because of convenient presentation of content and lists are possibly not the best option for this. So I agree with you. Um, the next question I would like to hand over to, to Lars, who has raised his hand, please. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Um, I think, um, I think the interface is fine. So there, there, I don't really see uh, much of a problem. I think the the challenge will be what you. I mean, we have to understand. Okay, there's a lot of competition out there. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of catalogs, not as unified, and that's why we why we keep on building them, and not as much adapted to our community. Um, but if in doubt, people go just Google stuff, and uh, yes. that's where they go to. So I think your main challenge will be once it's implemented um, is to to push that as hard as you can, you know. So to to make sure that the uh, the shock marketplace is everywhere. There's T-shirts, there's caps, uh, there's shock and all, uh, all around. Um, but just because that's really something you can offer, you have the whole marketing potential of uh, Daria, the impact on the community and so on, behind it. And um, yeah, you know, that's what needs to be pushed to make everybody aware that's the place to go. Um, but uh, on the other hand, to make this come to life, I think the uh, one of the integral aspects is the uh, motivation of curators. Um, and for that, for example, um, I'm I'm not sure if the if the curators themselves are, are so um, positioned or represented in the interface. So if you have, some, for example, a certain kind of section, um, that it becomes clear, okay, who is the person who curates that, or is it something that they uh, that they fall down into something like an anonymous yep. uh, community? Um, so it could be useful um, to, uh, to, to highlight the position of those people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not only invisible minions, but it's actually somebody who, who stands in there and uh, says, okay, here, this is what, uh, what I selected. This is what we selected. Maybe it can be a group as well. And, um, another, um, and that's some, some actual feedback because the, the, a long time ago in the um, uh, Daria Working Group for Visual Media and Interactivity, we also had something like a, a little catalog. And there the idea was, okay, we want to create and foster something like a discussion about tools. So that there could be a way for people to give feedback on saying, oh, I used this uh, and it was great. We used it for this and that project. Um, that never really took off because we, yeah, we actually, we didn't push uh, enough to uh, make people aware of it, to make people use it. Um, I still think that there is a benefit uh, to establish that also as a kind of yeah, discussion platform about tools. Um, because we have a big community, we have a lot of people who use these kind of tools and who have first-hand knowledge about, okay, what does it mean to use that? What's the advantages, what's the drawbacks and so on. So this kind of communication could be, um, yeah, could be a useful motivator for people also to go to the platform. 
because they not only see a list and then they have to go to the website anyway, but they can also see somebody saying, yeah, well, this, they stopped developing that five years ago, not worth uh, investing your time in the worst case, but there can be also good cases for that. And I think the, the other learning that we had from the working group was um, there should be something like a playlist feature. You know, in, in the same sense that um, if you go to any of the big music platforms uh, nowadays, the songs are all out there, you know, so you have a one search interface, you can find probably any song that you can imagine uh, in there. But um, that's, that's not the, the key element. The key element is, okay, you want to have something like a playlist, you want to have a selection of certain kind of songs um, that fit to your mood, fit to your need or whatever it is. And uh, within our community, I think we have something very similar. Uh, because back in the days we had, um, there was another working group uh, for educational resources. They wanted to compile lists of tools uh, for um, teaching on uh, uh, teaching and learning on visual media. So in that case, uh, I could imagine, for example, for the shock marketplace uh, that we have somebody, somebody makes a suggestion of, okay, these are the top five tools for um, geocoding, geocoding data. Mm -hmm. You know, and so, so that would be a geocoding data um, or teaching, teaching geocoding or something like that. So to not have only um, something like a static uh, ontology of those different kind of tools, but something dynamic where people can create something. So to say a playlist in this way um, that they can then pre-select and specifically tailor for a certain kind of user group. Um, some, some things like that. So that's, that's the idea that came to my mind there. Many, many thanks, well, Lars. I think uh, some of your points uh, we already discussed in the team, some not. Uh -huh. So I'm very uh, thankful for this. I've noted it down. That's exactly what we want to hear from you. So if the okay, others cool. also have uh, such ideas and they can be quite creative. So playlist feature or, or scoreboard has been mentioned in the chat. Please come forward. And uh, but, maybe Clara and, and uh, Nicola, you want to, to add something on this regard because the, the incentives or rewarding things are really something we are discussing uh, at the moment. You mean money, Laura? <laughs> no. I think that... Uh, <laughs> uh, you had to say something, uh, yes, definitely. I, I do agree that we need to, uh, to have... A, I don't want uh, as to just say in the chat, uh, maybe we don't want the competition, but... Uh, we want a possible reward. I don't know which form, because some people doesn't like to see their name somewhere. So, but uh, for open method again, uh, we have this kind of thing. We have uh, this kind of uh, information about who, who has done that. And I like the idea of the playlist, uh, Lars. A very, very good idea. Maybe Cara, you have something else to say? Uh, no, nothing else, but I also like this idea of playlist. I'm taking notes of different feedbacks and I'm adding this one. Definitely. And what we can just mention is that uh, for sure the, the, the citation of the contributors, so the, 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 the website is already clearly stating uh, who contributed to enrichment or creation of the content in the SSH open marketplace. And it's like the first step for uh, recognition to, to cite and then to try to also support uh, as far as we, as we can uh, within the shock project, for example, the, the contribution for, for testers. Like if you, if you want to register as a tester and then to contribute actively to the testing, um, we have the possibility to, to support um, uh, visibility and to, to make some kind of, um, of um, yeah, to, to provide visibility for the testers and it's already something that, uh, that matters. It's just a first step in, in terms of uh, incentives, but it, uh, it's, it already matters. There was some discussion going around, is it a marketplace or something like a catalog. Uh, I'd like to hear more opinions on this topic. Why um, some of you may be skeptical towards marketplace in this regard or what would be missing to have a marketplace. I think the creation discussion we had fits into this picture, but maybe you have other um, thoughts uh, regarding how we name it as a, as a marketplace and not a catalog.
and still a catalog would be useful because uh, some years ago we uh, did a landscape study of the diarrhea resources around there and there is up to today no real central information hub where you can inform yourself about the resources so a catalog would be useful in this regard as well but again uh, if you want to have something more and that's why we called it a marketplace uh, yeah so many thought about the marketplace thing um, so when i at least hear my marketplace that would indicate to me that the service like shock is measuring its success for example by allowing for some partnerships. Let's say that there are services, tools, data sets uh, aggregated and um, service like Shock facilitates cooperation, striking up cooperation and things like that, and then tracks it, monitors it, and it's one of the measurements of success of such service. That would, one of the, that would be one of the things that Marketplace indicates to, uh, is indicating to me in research circles. Right, uh, so I wonder whether it is a part of the project design for Shock that you want to somehow measure whether Shock is successful by uh, tracking whether some partnerships, some projects are uh, originating because people see services and tools and data sets in Shock and can contact each other or something like that. Mm -hmm. Many thanks, Tomas, for this input. I think it's time to wrap up, if you agree, because we have uh, five minutes left till uh, 11.30. Um, so I will stop to share my screen and we do have um, a last uh, Mentimeter to, to uh, suggest to you with some few questions. Martina, do you think you could share your screen with the Menti? Great, so you can go back to menti.com and it's still the same code, I think, 2606.68. And the first question uh, we have now for you, in what ways could the SSH Open Marketplace support your work? So that's some of the things that we had discussed already, but uh, maybe we can here have an overview of, of your answers thanks to, thanks to this Metti. So getting new research ideas, access to tools and services, to find friendly tools for my research and for my teaching, context to get up to date, get to know what is available. So this knowledge hub idea is really something that, uh, that matters and uh, that we try to, to develop creating the SSH Open Marketplace. Identify also smaller communities or individual sources. Yeah, that's also an important point. Providing info about our tools to understand workflows and links between tools. Share tools and code. Access to tools and service linked to training materials. So that's interesting because I think what we are trying to do is uh, is quite close to this uh, to to, the, to your answer. So it's also reassuring in a sense. So thank you for for your contribution here. Can we go to the next question? The next question is what kind of services, tools or resources would you like to see being incorporated in the SSH Open Marketplace? And yes, this can be generic or very specific. So if you, if you have uh, specific tools or services you would like, we are, um, it's, it's already some kind of a curation exercise. <laughs> we are asking you here, even if uh, we really want to, to open the curation exercise directly in, in the platform as soon as uh, our uh, curator's component and will be implemented, but uh, what, I, what I do not know, yes, because exactly, so the serendipity idea is really one of the things we would like to, to push. So this is actually, yeah, research scenarios, code repositories, tutorials, citation tool, interesting, okay. 
glam resources also cultural cultural heritage resources yeah so covering different uh, um, areas and different data communities as well controlled vocabulary tethers okay metadata collections now thank you for this contribution i think we can move to the next question how would you expect to be involved in the community we aim at gathering on, on the marketplace so here we have several um, options and if you if you choose the other one maybe you can also uh, write uh, in a comment on, on the chat what kind of other kind of involvement you would like to you would like to contribute to so only three answer and oh, five okay so, so this is also interesting for us to understand uh, what kind of, this is exactly the discussion around uh, fostering uh, motivation to, to, for the contributions we, we would like to, to see on, on the marketplace because we are quite well aware that it, it can be an additional work. So we would like to, to find the best approach here. So all the discussions today was really interesting. That we, uh, thank you. Occasionally and test. Okay, so that's an interesting answer. Can we move to the next question, please? So, do you have any burning questions that haven't been tackled yet? I think it's a no, so we can move to the last question. I think we have a last question, Martina, if I'm not mistaken. No, that this was one was the last one, one because I okay. switched the order. <laughs> Perfect. But thank you very much uh, for, uh, for your contribution and, and for the active discussion. It's really an important, uh, an important session we had today. Uh, sorry for the technical issues we had. Um, and if you think about uh, registering as a tester, it's, it's something that uh, you, can, you can do on the, shock, uh, on the shock website, on the entry for the marketplace. And I don't know, Stefan, if you want to add something to conclude. Yeah, many thanks, uh, Laura, for taking over. And yes, go to the uh, Shock Marketplace website. Um, we keep it constantly updated. Um, I think we have introduced the public consultation platform in our talks. So this will be something we will use uh, until the end of this year to channel a bit uh, your feedback and um, the ideas from the community. Get involved there. Um, you uh, may get in touch with you uh, for every question you have regarding the marketplace, we are looking forward. Um, we will look again uh, afterwards at the chat. There has been a lot of activity there. I was not able to follow every uh, question, so likely we will come back to you. And yeah, I'd like to thank uh, the speakers from the shock team. Um, we have a large a shock team behind, so the speakers only uh, represent a small share of our team. Please be aware of this. And last but not least, I want to thank you, the audience, for sharing your time with us. And we really appreciate uh, your feedback and your comments. Thank you.